Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Thanks for watching. Well, this is sort of a follow up video to one that I did not too long ago, and it was on the capture card. Very inexpensive, it's supposed to be a 1080p, 60 frames per second capture card. This one right here, that I did a quick little box opening and review of it. Came in this nondescript box, as you recall, as well, right? One thing I forgot to mention this box actually had a small CD in it with some software. But I chose not to install that because I didn't think it was needed. And as it turns out for the test, I didn't think it was. So I don't like to install things on my computer unless I absolutely have to. So I didn't install that. But if you want, if you were to get that, you will get that little CD in there as well. Well, there was a lot of comments on that video. And so I went ahead and bought the other one that people were saying was actually better. And it would actually have a better frame rate to it. This one actually costs twice as much as this one. And I wanted to open up this box and also tell you about how I'm going to do things a little bit differently on this video. First of all, you may have noticed, or not, it's being recorded in 1080p. It's not being recorded in 4K. When I record in 4K, I can only go 30 frames per second, which is no way in the world would it match a 60 frames per video capture card if I was doing a demonstration, which I did on this. So this is how this whole video is going to be, 1080p 60. So let me go ahead and open up this box. And then what I'll also do is I am not going to just use a simplistic capture. I'm going to use OBS, the online broadcasting software. That's a freeware software that everybody uses, mostly people who are streaming or doing live broadcasts, either to Twitch or to YouTube or a similar type service. So I have that installed. And I'm going to go ahead and run this, and it has a log to it that shows you what the frame's capture was. So when I do the testing of these two head-to-head, -head, which is what I'm going to do here, you'll be able to see what OBS says the frame rates are, just so that everybody's convinced one way or the other, because I really don't know. I'll find out when I do the testing. So let me open up this box and show you what came inside. I have not opened it up yet. Okay, so this one actually has a really nice commercial package to it. Unlike this one that came in the equivalent of a plain paper bag, or at least a plain paper box. So with the extra money I paid for this, I would expect it no less. So let's open this up. I guess it comes apart up here. It's upside down in here. Okay, it's got a little instruction booklet. Unlike what the other one had, it has an actual user manual that shows you pictures and everything to it, huh? At first I thought it was a booklet type, but it's just fan folded. But at least it's got a manual to it. And then this device here, nicely wrapped. It's not just sitting in the box like the other one was. It's got a nice little cushion package to it. And what do we got here? The HDMI video capture. Still no name. So let me go ahead and hook it up and test it and compare it to the other one that we have. Okay, let me put them side by side and see what they look like. The original one is a little bit bigger. It has the little tail to it, which I thought was pretty nifty that you could actually do that. I also saw other ones online that this is removable. Mine was not, but uh, a little bit smaller and we'll, we'll see what happens, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do some testing on comparison between these two devices. I have both of them right here and I'm gonna test them out in a comparison fashion. What I have here on the table is my secondary backup camera, the Sony that I recently did videos on, and I have an HDMI cable coming out of it. I have my computer with uh, OBS installed and set up and ready to go. And I'm going to plug each one of these devices into a separate USB 3.0 port that I have here. So there's two 3.0 ports on the computer here. I'm going to make sure that I use a separate one for each of the two devices. Okay, so let me pick one of them. I'll pick the old one first. We've seen this one tested before, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it works okay with OBS. I'm going to plug the USB into it, and then I'm going to plug it into the first USB 3.0 port. The light comes on, and that means it's ready to show that it's active. I've got to enable it in OBS, so I'm going to come in here and add a source. Come into this sources box and hit the plus. A video capture source. Say OK to that. Doesn't matter what I call it. Right now it defaulted to my Elgato 4K60 board that's in my PC. But I don't want to use that. Let me pick the down menu here. And there's one called the USB video. Click on that. 
I gotta turn the camera on, of course. That would help. And now we are connected through and talking to the actual computer at this point. So let me say OK to this. Now the first thing you'll notice here is I do have it set for the maximum resolution. And I'm going to go ahead and do a screen capture of this so that we can see what's happening here. So now I have screen capture running on this OBS screen. So we'll be able to bring it up and show you some of the details on it. But all, down in the right hand corner, all the way at the bottom, it shows what we're trying to record at 60 frames per second. 1080p, 60 frames per second is how I have OBS configured right now. So I'm going to use OBS to actually do a recording. I'm going to put my fingers here and I'm going to dance as I start the recording. I'll record for about 20 seconds. Okay, that's close enough. So now what I'll do is I'll unplug this one. And I'll plug this one in. But before I do that, let me disable and kill this video capture device. So I'll do a minus on it. It says, am I sure? So that is no longer a video capture. So I'm putting a new one in right now. This secondary double the price one that I bought. And I'll put it into the second USB 3.0 port. Even though it's advertised to work in a USB 2.0, I figured I would try it in USB 3.0 to take that out as a variable. And then let me add that device. Again, it went to the Elgato, but I don't want that. It used the same exact name as the other one. That's how it identifies itself. Unfortunately, there's no indicator on this device to show you that it's actually active, unlike the, uh, the older one that I tested previous. But I'll say OK to that. And now we have this screen set up. Let me, go, let me actually do another 20 second recording of this. There we go. So now I've made two recordings, one for each of those two devices. But I do want to show you something in the log. This is an important one. If you go to help in OBS, pick log files and say show current log. This is what you get. And down at the bottom, it shows you when those capture devices were initialized. How did they initialize? And the point I wanted to make by this, if you look at them both separately, this was the first one I plugged in. It did identify the Elgato and that showed as, uh, see the 4K 60 Pro? That shows as 60 FPS, 60 frames per second. But the video capture card, the one, the first one we did that just said USB video, it only shows as 30 frames per second. And then when I tried the second one, did it again, and guess what it shows? Also 30 frames per second right here. They have the exact same name to it in terms of how it's identified by the software. Now I'm going to do the third one, which is a capture exactly the same way with my fingers on the Elgato. And I know that that works at 60 frames per second. And then I'm going to bring them into my editor and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is my PowerDirector video editing software. I've taken the three clips that I created using OBS and I've transferred them in here. I put them each on a separate track. And of course, I put some comments as well. If you look at the actual picture that we have here, you see three images. I've shrunk them down to fit. The top center one is the Elgato 4K60. The bottom left is the video capture card original one, the one I tried first today. And then the right hand lower one is the video capture card, the new one that I also created today. If I were to run this, you would actually see what uh, what's happening with the fingers. Now I'm going to actually put this in larger version as part of this video right after this, because it's kind of hard to tell with the little window here, but this is how I measured it. Now you really can't follow the fingers if you know how to do that. And you can see the, the hesitation, it might make sense to you. 
But if not, I've got a better way to deal with it. I will pause it right there, and I have this thing set up for 60 frames per second. Right now it's on second 13 frame 20 out of 60. And if I click on this little next frame, I can go one frame at a time. So let's take a look at what's happening with the fingers. If you look at the top center one, with every click, one of the fingers is moving, or the shadow. But pick either one of the bottom ones. They only move every other frame. And they move more severely, which shows that the actual frame rate is lower. So what this is telling us, which is totally unexpected to me, to be honest with you, is that neither one of those video capture cards is 60 frames per second. They are running at 30 frames per second, just like I saw what OBS indicated in its logs. So with that, I think that proves the test. This clip shows the larger version produced by the three videos shown together. You might be able to detect the movement in the fingers through this larger image. This one shows in slow motion. I slowed it down by five times so that you could see the movement of the fingers a little bit more clearly. So this one may be a little bit easier to detect the issue. Okay, well the testing is done. Some very interesting and surprising, to be honest with you, and disappointing results from that. These two devices are exactly the same, which is what I suspected. I suspected that there's probably one chip manufacturer that both of these no-name sources are using, and all they did was change the packaging. I don't know what to say about other reviewers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there was some comment about other reviewers saying that this one was the better one, much better. I don't see it. I did all the testing, and I have the results that, I'll, that I've shown you on this video. There is a difference in terms of the cases. This one is a plastic case. It comes with a pigtail, which actually is pretty convenient because you don't have to have it hanging off the end of your computer necessarily. This one has what it feels like an aluminum case to it. At least it's some sort of metal. I believe it's aluminum. So it's a bit more solid in this regard. However, this is not protected at all and they didn't give you a cap with it. So I don't know what to say about that. There was also no indicator on it to indicate when it was connected to the PC, whereas this cheaper one did have it. A little red light back here, an LED that shows you that. So anyway, those are the differences. I don't think that the metal case is worth twice the price. It's the exact same circuitry that even identified itself to OBS under the same name. So clearly, there's not any difference between these two devices. I did want to do this follow-up. I did not expect that I wouldn't get 60 frames per second. The results are indisputable at this point. But if you got something out of the video, I would appreciate if you at least consider subscribing to my channel. My head will pop up here in a moment. Just click on it, follow along, and subscribe. You don't have to pick alerts. I don't need you to do that. And subscribing doesn't cost anything with YouTube, believe me. So anyway, until the next time, take care, and I hope everybody is doing well.